Hi, this is Brian coming at you again from Adam's Garage. And I want to talk to you today about the conclusion of the gas tank relining process that we went through. I have some thoughts and some opinions that I'll share with you in case you're going to do this to your tractor. Maybe you can learn from some of the things that we did. I don't know what to do with the camera while I make this video. I think I'm just going to hand hold it here and focus on the tractor because I really can't show you inside the tank. I tried. I tried holding the camera up and I tried using a flashlight but you just can't see. But anyway, step one was to remove the tank obviously. You have to remove the fuel sediment bowl and plug that hole and get the tank out into the yard or wherever and stick the garden hose in it and get as much out as you can. Garden hose, pressure washer, rags, do whatever you have to do to clean out the tank. In this particular kit that we bought, it was a three-part kit, and it came from a popular online tractor parts store, but there are many kits available. My first opinion is if I did this again, I don't think I'd buy the kit. I think I would buy the pieces individually. Here's why. The first stage was just a detergent. And I think you could use something just like that purple stuff that you use on the garage floor or the green stuff or any kind of detergent. But honestly, here's what I would do differently. I was surprised that the kit didn't have a phosphoric step, phosphoric acid that is, to convert the rust. You know how phosphoric acid converts rust to... I don't know what it is. Chemistry was a long time ago. Iron phosphate or iron phosphite or something like that. It's, a, it's converted. Personally, I think next time I do this, I would do a detergent rinse, maybe using purple stuff or green stuff or dish soap, whatever you have. Then I think I would give the tank a rinse of phosphate acid to convert the rust. Phosphoric acid... I should have said phosphoric acid. Phosphoric acid is not that hard to find. In itself it might be, but there are many forms of it. Hey, just fill the tank up with Coca-Cola uh, cola of some sort, cheap stuff from the store. That's phosphoric acid. Or go to the home center, go to where the supplies are for painting the concrete floor, patio section for example. Concrete etcher is usually phosphoric acid. Um, personally, that's what I use at home, but be careful when you buy it. Get the stuff that doesn't have any other forms of acid in it, such as hydrochloric acid or something like that, because that form of acid eats metal, and it doesn't know when to stop. It just keeps on going. Phosphoric acid does not eat metal. It just converts rust. So anyways, back to the story. I think I would invent a step and do a phosphoric acid dip to neutralize the acid. But anyways, in the kit, it was rinse. The first step was rinse with this detergent. Okay, that worked out good. Then you have to dry the tank out. And you saw that in the other videos that I made. You saw the uh, heat gun inside the tank drying the water out. The second step then was just a, a rinse. And in this particular kit that we had, the rinse was nothing more than acetone. And you had to rinse twice. Again, I think next time maybe just get a can of acetone and do it, you know. So then the tank has to be dried. To dry the tank out of acetone, you cannot put the dryer in the tank. I mean, the heat or the sparks from the fan motor inside of a tank, you'd have a bomb. So the tank must dry naturally. And that's very clear in the instructions. So be careful. Don't put the heat gun in the tank when there's acetone in there. For God's sakes, don't do that. <clears throat> when the tank is dry, then you put in the actual sealer stuff. And the sealer stuff is like oil. It has, it's it's kind of thick, kind of like paint, maybe. It kind of reminded me of pancake syrup, to be honest with you, like 30-weight oil. You put that into the tank. We put a piece of plastic over the cover, and then you just tip and twirl 
and move the tank back and forth up and down sideways because the stuff is going to move around inside the tank and coat everything but it doesn't move very fast because it's kind of like oil you know so you stand the tank up and then you lay the tank down then you roll the tank Adam worked on that for 15 minutes until he got sick of it then I took the tank and twirled it and all that other stuff for another five minutes so we're positive that we coated everything then you tip the tank upside down and try to get every blast drop to come back out and that's it I'm gonna get a flashlight here I will try show you what it looks like inside the tank this stuff has a blue dye in it maybe I can kinda of show you you see that blue See how the tank is now blue inside? I'll try. I'll try my best to show you something, but it's really hard to see. But the tank is blue inside. There you can kind of see it. Coats everything with that blue. And now we're just going to let it sit for, I think, four days before it's really, really dry. It's drying slow. So that's how it went for us. I felt a quart was good enough for this Farmall H. We put one quart in. Like I say, we twirled it around for quite some time. <clears throat> and then we tipped it out. And the can is on the bench here with the flashlight that I was just using. And we got perhaps a quarter of a cup out of the tank. Then I even stuck my finger in it and coated the top of the gas cap, being very careful to stay away from that little air vent. But that's what it looks like. It coats the metal and then it will dry hard, probably in three or four days. We're just going to let it sit. We're in no hurry. We captured the gas. We'll put the gas back in. We'll strain it through a coffee filter. Of course, we're going to reuse the gas. It's three and a quarter a gallon nowadays, thanks to our current leadership. But that's enough politics. And that will conclude the tank lining process. All in all, I think it was worth it. I think it's going to work. I'm glad we did it. But I think if I do it again, I'm going to do it a little bit differently. I could say I'll buy the pieces individually. I think I would do a phosphoric acid dip to convert the rust and then basically follow the instructions from the kit and then use a quart of whatever stuff. There are many brands. You can get it in many different places. Put it in there and we're just going to let this dry now for many, many days. It's drying slow and I think we're going to be just fine. I think this tractor really benefited from doing that. I believe we caught the rust pretty early. See, it wasn't too bad inside, but you want to combat it right away. So this is Brian. Thank you for watching my video. If your tank needs to be relined, have the courage and the confidence to do it. I think it was pretty easy to do. And as always, thank you for watching my video and have fun working on your old tractor. Bye now.